UC Davis environmental toxicologist Ron Jardima serves on an international panel of experts advising the federal government and British Petroleum on the application of chemical dispersants in the Gulf oil spill. He says dispersion creates droplets in the water column which both enhance the degradation of oil and impairs its surface movement. Jardima demonstrated how dispersants work. And so what, I, what I've done is I set up a couple of examples here and these are uh, um, seawater, artificial seawater, with a small amount of a mixture of motor oil, old motor oil, and hypoid gear oil on the top. And what I want to do is I want to show you what happens here. We'll take the left hand one first. What happens here when you just have sea state conditions with oil in seawater uh, over time. And I'm kind of mimicking wave action here. And you'll notice that when I put this back, the oil does disperse somewhat into droplets. Those droplets eventually coalesce, and you'll notice there's a, there's a layer back pretty much at the surface. Oil's less dense than water, so it tends to rise, and it tends to go back to the surface. And you'll notice over time, the water down here will have some dispersed, naturally dispersed droplets in it, but it'll get fairly clear again. <clears throat> now, on the other hand, and so this would be a situation where uh, we would decide not to disperse, and allow the oil to remain at the surface. Now in the real world, then this oil could flow and coat uh, shorelines. Okay, this one, I'm gonna add a little bit of dispersant here, and because I don't have Corexit here in the lab at the moment, I do at my other lab, but that's off site, I'm going to use a little bit of a similar type of dispersant, which is actually Dawn dishwashing liquid. It may look familiar to some of you. Okay, you can see it go down, it's blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Give it a little uh, wave action. Okay. And you'll notice a difference, quite a substantial difference. And you'll notice the difference over time will even be more pronounced. And what's happening in the second situation is that the dispersant has taken the oil and has broken it up into droplets and put them down into the water column. Now, <clears throat> the nice thing about that, I guess the, the positive about that, is that that actually causes the oil to go into droplets, which over time will help that oil degrade. But on the other hand, you're also impacting the organisms that may live in the water column. So, so when we considered dispersant use as a panel, we really were faced with sort of two options allowing the oil to remain on the surface and thus flowing toward shorelines and oiling beaches and wildlife and sensitive uh, marshes and estuaries, this form, or dispersing the oil and allowing it to go into the water column offshore, which would tend to keep it off of shorelines, but now by putting it in the water column would send the impact instead to plankton and, and the larvae of various fishes and invertebrates and so forth. And uh, it wasn't a perfect decision and it was one that we agonized over. And as I mentioned, it's one that we want to uh, um, have the responders continue to reevaluate over time. But uh, at least for the time being, the thought or the feeling was that this situation was a little less of a serious impact for us than this situation would have been. And thus the recommendation or the input that um, we continue with uh, the use of dispersants via subsurface injection.